Land Rover Defender, our new 2020 Defender, raised air intake. So this is going to go on the left-hand side on all vehicles. It's going to go, we'll unbox it in a minute. It's in that box. So it's going to sit up here. Now, and it's got a little cap on it, but the cap points backwards. There's much debate about whether you want round air going from the front or whether that, if you're off in a desert, it gets sandy. So it's going to have the air intake pointing back. And we're going to take this off here and we're going to take this off here and it sort of goes on here and it's going to take the air in down through that i don't think it's going to affect the weight in height much i think it's half for show but it's also half to help with the dust right okay now the instructions this is a genuine land report they're a bit worrying i thought well, that looked too tricky it's only a few bits we'll have a look but it reckons we've got to take the door off which is worrying me slightly i don't know if i'm a door off sort of guy but right, let's have a look what we've got. Come this way, George. So, what's a Roy ass when it's at home? I don't know, but there we go. Right, so this is the part number for it. We've got it there. Genuine Land Rover item. It's part of the Explorer pack. So if you order the Explorer pack, it's one of the subcomponents, or you can order it on its own. We'll get these on the website. Right, so here we go. We have that. And whoa. And that, there you go, that is, that's all we've got. That is our lot. Right, let's have a look at this. I haven't, we've looked at the instructions, but I haven't actually looked at this yet. Oh, it's in its own little giffy bag sack. Right then. So, let's have a look, right then. Okay, so let's have a look. So not own. so that's going to go on the car. Obviously, we've got... We've got a little bit of a rubber seal around here. We've got some Land Rover stuff here. I think these two holes here are gonna form the fixings. We'll have a look at that, that's what I, right. I don't know what this little fluted bit here is for, that looks quite flash. So it's got a seal pretty much all the way around. It's got a bit of a, I guess this is to stop it vibrating. I don't think it needs an air seal, but this is a sort of spongy, spongy stuff there. So let's have a look, that's gonna go on. Like that, so well, that's going to cover that. That's going to go up there. So interestingly, that um, normally the air intake's right at the top, but the air intake appears to be all the way down there. Yeah. So if I stick the light up in there, and you look down those flutes, George, can you see the light in there? Yeah. So that, so the air intake, so it's taking the air intake from here. This bit at the top really isn't. Oh yeah, there's a little bit of an air intake there. A little bit of an air intake there. Look. You see down in there? No. Not really, but you have to believe me. Hey, you can see my light section. Right, okay, so that's it, right? Everyone's everyone's bored now. Oh gosh, put the light down, right. So we've got that, right? We get most of that. Um, what have we got here? There's not a lot to this kit, is there? Mm -mm. <laughs> no. A little gloss black cap, which I guess is gonna, when we finish, do you reckon that's gonna, gonna go on somewhere on there, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I haven't quite worked out how yet. Oh, there's a, that slot there looks like it, there we go, like that, it looks like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's gonna be a finisher cap. And then we've got some fixing bolts. Oh, blimey. That's us done. Right, we've got a metal bracket. So we have, let's have a look. We have a metal bracket. I suspect that's going to go. We have a single riv nut, rivet nut. Uh -huh, yeah. We've got these two little sort of cage nuts. They're sort of B-Tech riv nuts really, aren't they? Right. And then, I'm going to get in trouble for saying B-Tech now, aren't I, George? Right then. And then we've got those bolts so i'm i suspect that one's going in there i'm good at this george i reckon two of that i reckon so i reckon that's that's the fixing unit. And now from what i recall from the fitting instructions uh, is that these inserts we're gonna fit in there so i reckon these little cage nuts that i've offended already are gonna pop in there all right like that 
that. Why they can't fit them for us, I've got no idea. I guess my labour's cheaper, right? So then we've got to sort of compress those up a bit. So that'll be those. And then this, I think, is going to bolt that to something. Right, should we go and have a look at the instructions now, George? Yeah. Right, so they reckon we should have all these parts. So I think we've got two of those and two of those and one of those and one of those. They're somewhat stylized, and it looks like they've shown those squashed rather than caged. We've got the metal bracket, we've got the cap, and we've got the snorkel. So we're good to go. Right, blah, blah, blah. Accessories not correctly installed can be dangerous. Read the instructions carefully prior. Comply with the instructions at all time. If in doubt, contact your nearest approved dealer. Don't listen to dodgy geezers on the internet on YouTube because them is bad. Right, that's my warning done. Right then. The raised intake is always installed on the left side. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, it might not look anything like it does in the pictures. Thanks. Right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to... We did this when we wrapped our A-pillars, didn't we? So we're going to take out that little bit at the bottom. And then we're going to... Caution, to avoid damage to the vehicle paintwork. Retain that, there you go. Right. So let's do that. Let's get on and do that. We're going to whoop this out and then take this off. Let's see if we can remember how to do that. Right, so let's pull this clip off. And that's it. It pulls off from the back there, look. And we should better wiggle that out. That's that clip out. And then there's a Torx there. So let me go and get a Torx, see what size. Right, we've got one of these Torx. It's a T27, which is a weird one. 27 a prime number, George? No, three nines are 27. Feels like it should be a prime number. One. Okay. Right, so that's your bolt there. Right, so let's put that down carefully. And then this then should slide down, shouldn't it? There you go. And it should release off the clips. There we go. Right, so it's got... What's it got? I forget how it works, this one. It's got these little docks here that it goes into. It's like a keel, and then it slides up in all these little, which tabs is it? I guess it's these ones here, actually. They slide up, so they go. So we don't need that for the minute. Right, let's put that to one side. Right, so next is telling us we've got to install this rib nut thing in the top here, and it's saying that the hole may be covered by tape. So we've got to try and make sure the rivet nut is correctly seated. And I'll make sure it's secure before moving to the next step. And it said there is a sticker over the hole that will need to be pierced before you install the rivet nut. Okay, right, let's have a look. Right, so there's the rivet nut, there's the bit of tape. So we need to be, like if I just compress it there, I can see there's a hole there. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna put the nut, or the bolt, sorry, the bolt into the rivet nut, make sure it comes through so I'm spreading the load. I'm just going to use that to, to tap it. I'm going to make it find the hole. Yeah, well, that didn't take a lot, did it? Now, what worries me is that that rib nut there is quite loose in there. It, it, it's going to spin when I turn it, which is going to make installing the rib nut quite tricky. I might use a different... I think they've over spec that hole. It's quite loose. Because these little ridges on the outside of the rib nut are supposed to grip on the outside of the hole. But that's, that's just going to spin. Um, so depending what rivet nut tool we use, that could be tricky. Right, we've failed. We've now got this other type of rivet nut tool. This is designed by a friend of mine in America. Um, and it's got these two wedges. And as these two wedges slide together, it's going to crimp this nut. And this nut at the bottom half is going to bellow out and form a captive nut. So we'll try this one. But the problem is Land Rover have created a hole that's too big it's supposed to be a tight fit as I explained before so let me just assemble this now the idea is as I wind this nut in here these will slide together and that will crimp up so let's take up the screw. now there is actually a little bar I can put in the tool let me get the little he designed it with a little bar let me get the little bar right so the little hole so I can put that tool in there and that'll stop the tool twisting and then as like, sorry, you can't see a lot here. Can you see under there, George? I'm trying to... Not really. Not really. And as the wedges slide, it will compress that rib nut. But it's made tricky by two things. One, the rib nut is not the right size for the hole. or well, the hole's too big. And secondly, um, they've, you've got this standoff, so you've got to find yourself a little spacer that I put under there 
because I can't get the rivnut tool right next to it. Right, that's going tight now. And as it gets tighter, it gets easier. And now what we've got is the rivnut tools in there now. So if I just undo this nut now, it should leave us a captive nut in there. Right, so I should be able to undo this nut now. We'll release my tool and the spacer. I'm going to drop that spacer down behind there. So there we go. So that's the tool with the spacer. We've got these on the website. Um, and now we have a captive nut, which is what we were trying to do all along. So that's a bit tricky, but hopefully they go. So that type of tool is good. And that space is good because it gives you the standoff so you're not resting on this plastic. Right, let's go and have a look at the next bit. Right, so now they're telling us we need to take out this side vent. And although the arrow looks like it moves to the right, it's actually coming towards us. Uh, and it's got nine of these little clips. So let's go and let's go and be brutal, shall we? Let's rip this out. Right, so I guess if we open the door, we can get a little bit of a grip. And I think there is a thing about don't trap your fingers in the door. So let me come the other side there. Right then. I think we've just got to be brutal. brutal at all so in fact has it left any of these how do those clips work oh look it's left all the clips in the doors look in the door in the wing so those little clips i think should be on there we've seen a lot of these little clips with this land rover so there we go put those all back on there i think we've have we got them all we might be all right one two three yeah are we yeah, that's it. So yeah, we haven't lost any. So there you go. That's how to take out the, the side vent on your Defender. Right, let's get back to the instructions. Right, so what they want us to do is drill a square sort of hole in the top of this A-pillar trim here. And because what's going to happen is this bracket's going to bolt onto here. And it needs to know where the hole is there. So I guess they want they want this whole flat bit of the bracket to fit in through there. And then what happens is the snorkel appears to that bracket goes there and it, it bolts up using that bracket and that forms the top fix in here. So it's given us some dimensions that it wants us to cut out on here. So I guess we're going to have to put some masking tape on. Gosh, is that from the outside? That's some fairly complicated rear hold dimensions there. They could have given us a little sticker for that. Right, let's have a look. Right, let's put some masking tape over this and see if we can work out these complicated measurements. A lot of this is going to be hidden anyway, so we're not altering. Right, so it reckons it wants, what distance from the top has it got? 11 millimetres from the top. I'm going to go roughly 11 millimetres from the top there. Okay, so it's high tech stuff. Right, in from the side, and it reckons 15 in from the side. Where are we? How do they work this out? And then it reckons 31 in from the other side. 31 in from the other side. And that goes to 32, so it's going to be roughly parallel. And then it reckons, well, it reckons it's 45 millimetres down. That's so like 30, 45 down there. Yeah. That's a massive hole. Right, so it reckons if we do that, then that bracket should be able to fit in, in through there. Right, let's go for it. that up a little bit with a, a triangular file is quite good because you can get in the corners a bit better so it's not uh not going to win any awards for that job am i but there we go right so let's have a go now well, it hasn't ripped my uh, my trim off has it my my wrap i've got to be careful going that way um, right there we go so now Hopefully this can go back on. You've got to like get it back in there. I remember this from when we did the wrapping. You have to get it 
Oh, it's backwards, that's it. That's it. Oh, there we go. So that should go there. And then I can check the metal bracket. Sorry, I'm disappearing. So the metal bracket, hopefully then, can line up with that and bolt into there. So let's have a hope. Hope that all works out. Right, so they're telling us now we can put all this back in, back in here. Mm. And we can clip that little plastic trim on. Um, okay, so I clip this corner in first, and then clip that corner in. That's that done. Right, so we've now got, so we've done all that really just to, they could have fitted that. Rib nut in there or something. But anyway, so we've now got a hole cut and a rib nut which forms our top mount. We've got this open, so let's have a look what they've got for us next. Right, so it's telling us we've got to pop the little cage nuts in here, which we've done. Right, we've got to compress these rib nuts too. I thought they, they because they, they just spin in the hole, so I was hoping. So we've had to put the spacer over again because because it lies in a recess. Right, so let me just put the, put the tool in again. It could be cool because we should be able to see how the the rib nut tool works better now. So that's there. Now if I do this nut up, you should hopefully be able to see the way the, the wedges work. Okay, that should be that one. Undo the, that should be that one compressed up. There's quite a lot of travel on that one. Well, there we go. So that's both the rib nuts in, and if you look in the hole, you can see they're concentric, right? And it's saying don't get it in squiffy. It should be concentric. So I think we've got it in concentric. Um, and then what we've got to do is we've got to offer it up. Now this is the tricky bit. The bolts go in from behind. Now this is where it gets scary, because this is where they tell you. Um, this is where they tell you to remove the door. Right, this is the scary one. They don't make a big fuss, but remove the front left door. Ask your Jaguar Land Rover Rita for a copy of this instruction if you do not have access to topics for additional. Now, why the poop do they want us to do that? So basically, what we've got to do is we've got to put two bolts in from the back. And I think you can't get your, your hand around the back of these bolts to get the bolts into these nuts. We put in... We put in the bolts where they're supposed to go. And what we've actually added is we've added some anti-loss washers here. So these are like nylon washers that stop it falling out. Because I was worried they're going to dive back in. So, so we, we've got those roughly in place. That one's quite at an angle, isn't it? It's got, there we go. And what we've got to try and do now is try and see if without taking the door off, we can line those up to catch these. Right, here we go. This is the plan. So get the door fully open. Then come back one click and it stays there and rests there. And what we're going to do, don't worry about the snorkel for a minute, I'm just going to show you. So we've got these held in place, but I can quite easily get my hand round the back of here. I've got a long reach socket, it's a bit of a fiddle, but you can see there, I can get my, my hand on there, all right, and I can get my hand in there and spin that. So what George is going to do, George is going to hold that up, he's going to line it up from the side and show you looking in, so we line it up. Let's see if we can do this, George. Let's see if we can video and do this. So you get that up there, George, roughly. Right, and then you line that bit up there. You can see just in the side there. Right, we in, yeah? Yeah, that's in. Right, now you just push that in gently. Right, and let's see if I can take the camera while you hold that there. And what I'm doing there is, whoa, if you can see down in there, Mums, that's it. Give it a little push. That's it. Up a little bit, George. Just up a little. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So we'll tighten it up in a minute. Right. And then if we go down the bottom, the bottom one's a little bit higher. But you've still got enough room to just about get in. Right. And George, if you line that up at the top. This is kind of rubbish on the video. Right, and I'm spinning this with my my hand here. Right, that's got that bottom one, I reckon. That is just the way to do it. 
And that saves taking that door off. Right, now I'll get the socket on it. But that, that is the trick. 10 millimeter socket, just to get that off. No need to take the door off. I'll get the socket on it now and just tighten that up. So one thing to watch before you finally tighten the bolts on the inside up is that the door doesn't catch on the, that's getting a bit close there. Um, so you can just give the, I would give it, I would give it as much of a push you can that way to give it the maximum clearance away from the door. Cause it is, it is jolly close that clearance on the door there. So there you go, just check that before you tighten those up fully. So there we go, we've just got the socket in there. There's enough room to get the socket in there. You always might be able to show you something from the side. And that should be pulling that in now. I've got one so one finger behind the socket pushing it against the bolt. So that should be pulling that in. Right, so if you zoom back a bit, George, we're, so now we've got all this, all this is all tightened, fully tightened without removing the door. And now we've got to fit this bracket in, but I'm a bit worried I'm gonna drop this bolt. So I'm gonna use another of those anti-loss washers. You can see how they work. They just sort of grip onto there. I think that's given a, give me a, so this is only then one piece. Right now I've obviously got to not drop this down the, oh, there we go. Right, so I'm going to use one of these screwdriver type ones because that'll allow me to get to get through there. So I've got to try and get it get it square on that on that rib nut really. There we go. Might be easier with a nut on there. That's getting it. Ah, don't do like I've just done that. It's not gripped on the, that was an epic fail, wasn't it? Yeah. All right, do that again. Right, put the glossy black cap on. Now this sort of concave surface goes against the A pillar there. So we haven't fitted that on. And it is fitting with this little spring clip here. So I think we just line it up and it goes in this little, it goes in that little groove there. One thing before you put the cap on is there is a little bit of double-sided tape here. And you can remove the, remove that before you put the cap on. And there we go. And then put the cap on. And that should keep it all secure. So that's the raised dare intake all finished. Have a look around that. Interestingly, it doesn't have any logo in it or anything that says Defender. It almost wants a, a badge or a, a graphic infill here. We'll work on that. But there we go. That's the, the raised air intake all done. All right. How could Land Rover improve? If you're listening to me, Land Rover, please, can you make a little sticker that you can stick on for that cutout where you've got to cut that square out of the A-pillar, please? Can you insert the two rib nuts that go into this. Don't supply them in the box. Can you pre-insert them? Your factory where you insert those has got a tool. They can do that really quickly. That will save time. And perhaps you could consider changing the instructions for not needing to take the door off or a possibility of not to do it. Also, I think in the kit you need to provide a spacer because it's really hard to get the rib nut tool, depending which type, in fairness, depending which type of rib nut tool you need to get that and also anti-loss washers. Those three anti-loss washers make it a lot easier, particularly with these bottom ones, to get those in. Good luck with that. Um, we'll put them for sale on the website, um, and good luck, have fun.